Well, Yumi was born in the countryside outside of Pyongyang, and life, of course, is very difficult, as it was and is for millions of people in her country. Uh, but life, as her family knew it, came to a complete stop when her father was arrested and sentenced to 17 years in prison. Yumi was in hospital uh, having her appendix removed when her sister suddenly disappeared. She had taken that decision with a friend to leave, and they hadn't told anybody. And when she came out, they were so scared, the three remaining members of the family, that Yumi and her mother then went to try and find her. The journey into China took only a day, but it meant crossing three mountains and a frozen river that the whole time they were walking across, they thought would give way at any time. And then you found yourselves outside in China, and your father managed to find his way to you eventually as well. And after that, while you're living in China, your father passed away from his colon cancer. And at 3 a.m. in the middle of the morning one day, you went off to... go and bury him, you said you couldn't tell your friends and you couldn't ask for help. I remember what it was like for me last year, so I know how you feel. And you buried him, and after that, you and your mother, and you still haven't found your sister, of course, decided to find your way uh, out. You went, to North, uh, you went to Mongolia, you crossed the Gobi Desert. You were uh, put into prison there for three months. You used small knives in front of the Mongolian guards and threatened suicide so that they wouldn't send you back to where you'd come from. And through that, eventually, you got to uh, South Korea and you've managed to catch up with your education in that time. Uh, your mother continues to work in restaurants, washing dishes, and you've started cultivating this activist voice. So of all the great honors I've been blessed with in my life to be able to do and to be able to be a small part of, I just wanted to ask everybody to welcome you. This is not I'm speaking. This is the people who want to tell the world what they want to say. North Korea is an unimaginable country. There is only one channel on TV. There is no internet. We aren't free to sing, say, wear, or think what we want. North Korea is the only country in the world that executes people for making unauthorized international phone calls. North Koreans are being terrorized today. When I was growing up in North Korea, I never saw anything about love stories between men and women. No books, no songs, no press, no movies about love stories. There is no Romeo and Juliet. Every story was propaganda to brainwash us about the Kim dictators. I was born in 1993, and I was abducted at birth, even before I knew the words freedom or human rights. North Koreans are desperately seeking and dying for freedom at this moment. When I was nine years old, I saw my friend's mother publicly executed. Her crime, watching a Hollywood movie, expressing doubt about the greatness of the regime can get three generations of a family imprisoned or executed. When I was four years old, I was warned by my mother not to even whisper, the birds and mice 
couldn't hear me. I admitted, I thought the North Korean dictator could read my mind. My father died in China after he escaped North Korea. And I had to bury him at 3 a.m. in secret. I was 14 years old. I couldn't even cry. I was afraid to be sent back to North Korea. The day I escaped North Korea, I saw my mother raped. The rapist was a Chinese broker. He targeted me. I was 13 years old. There is a saying in North Korea, women are weak, but mothers are strong. My mother allowed herself to be raped in order to protect me. North Korean refugees, about 300,000 are vulnerable in China. 70% of North Korean and teenage girls are being victimized, sometimes sold for as little as $200. We walked across the Gobi Desert, following a compass. When they start working, we follow the stars to freedom. I felt only the stars were with us. Mongolia was our freedom moment. Death or dignity. Under the knives, we were prepared to kill ourselves if we were going to be sent back to North Korea. We wanted to live as humans. People often ask me, how can we help North Koreans? There are many ways, but I would like to mention three for now. One, educate yourself so you can raise awareness about human crisis in North Korea. Two, help and support North Korean refugees who are trying to escape to freedom. Three, petition China's double repatriation. We have to shed a light on the darkest place in the world. It isn't just North Korean human rights. It's our rights that North Korean dictators have violated for seven decades. We need governments all around the world to put more, to put more pressure on China to stop repatriation. In particular, Chinese delegates of One Young World can play a part by speaking up. North Korea is indescribable. No humans deserve to be oppressed just because of their birthplace. You need, we need to focus less on the regime and more on the people who are being forgotten. One young world, we are the ones who will make them visible. Fellow delegates, please join me as we make this a global movement to free North Koreans. <laughs> when I was crossing the Gobi Desert, scared of time, I thought nobody in this world cared. <laughs> it seemed that only the stars were with me. But you have listened to my story. You have cared. Thank you very much. <laughs>